What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today I have a different type of video. I am going to be cooking my Sunday dinner from beginning to end. Now before we get started, I do want to thank ShopRite for sponsoring today's video. Now you guys are probably wondering, Z, what exactly are you making for dinner today? Now funny you mentioned, because I am actually going to be making one of my all time favorite dishes. I am going to be cooking some chuleta guisada con arro blanco y habichuela guisada. Translation, we are making some stewed pork chops with some yummy white rice and some delicious Dominican style beans. Now, this whole entire dinner would not be possible without the yummy ingredients that I found at ShopRite. And in particular, I am using their wholesome pantry and their bowl and basket line. Now, let me tell you guys something, okay? 90% of the ingredients that I am using to make this classic Dominican Sunday dinner was made possible by shopping at ShopRite. So head on over to your local ShopRite, especially if you want to recreate this dish. Now get comfortable, okay? Because we're gonna be cooking together and you guys know, I like to chit chat a little bit, so I do hope that you enjoy. And like always, definitely tag me whenever you recreate any of these recipes. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, we're actually going to be preparing the end of the pork chop dish, if you believe it or not. And all we're going to do is we're gonna take our chopped garlic and we're going to add it to our sliced onions and peppers. And I like to do this because I like for my dishes to have different types of texture and crunch. So instead of stewing the onions and peppers with the pork chops where they get really, really soft, I actually like to leave them at the end because they get a little bit of bite. So I'm just going to add a pinch of kosher salt along with some white vinegar. And you can definitely use red wine vinegar or regular red vinegar if that's what you have on hand. And I'm just gonna mix this ever so slightly. Now, oh my goodness, this smells amazing. And pretty much what we're doing here is that we're letting it pickle it just for a little bit. So that vinegar and that salt combined with the onions and peppers is gonna really bring out some more flavors and it's gonna give it that little bit of like oomph at the very end, which is perfect because you definitely want a little bit of brightness. All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side and now we're going to prepare the pork chops, which is obviously the star of the show. So I'll be back in just a second. <laughs> Okay, so here I have the pork chops, which I did buy from ShopRite. Now they have a whole bunch of different types of pork chops. These ones that I have right here are actually the thin sliced ones, but they have some center cut pork chops, which are just as tasty. And they also have some pork chops that are thicker cut, which are awesome because you can do a whole bunch of things with those as well as with these. Now, keep in mind that this is the wholesome pantry pork chop. And one of the reasons that I absolutely love it, you can probably see it right here. And I'll make sure so that you guys can get a close up of it, but it is antibiotic free and it is grown without any added growth hormones, which you guys know is super, super, super important to me. And it's one of the main reasons why I'm super picky when I go grocery shopping. And one of the reasons why ShopRite is definitely one of the places and one of my go-to places to go grocery shopping. Now, as I mentioned before, hold on, let me just put this <laughs> off to the side. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just jump right into seasoning the pork chops. So we are going to add some kosher salt. And by the way, I will be including the recipe here on the screen and definitely down below. I'm also going to add some fresh black pepper. And you guys know that I absolutely love using some fresh black peppercorns. I'm also going to be using some Dominican oregano. And listen, if you can't find Dominican oregano, regular oregano will also work. 
I'm also going to be using some limes. And these limes as well are also by Wholesome Pantry. So when I tell you guys that you can find the majority of the ingredients to make this classic Dominican dish, I wasn't kidding. All right, so I'm just going to take them out of the packaging. And honestly, all I need is one lime. And I always say that fresh limes definitely taste better than the stuff that comes in the bottle because it just has a way more vibrant flavor. So I'm just going to use my lime press to get all those juices out. All right, so now that I'm pretty much done squeezing the limes, and as you can see, these limes, they are not stingy limes. They have a good amount of juice in them. I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to add some fresh garlic. Now, you can see it right here. I did mash this ahead of time. It might be long. And I'm not going to use all of the garlic that I ended up mashing up because I actually need them for the beans. So I'm just going to add, I would say, about three quarters of it. I'm not going to mix it until it's well combined. Now, funny enough, because this comes together really, really quickly, we're actually going to be making the pork chops last. So the first thing that we're going to make is actually going to be the rice, then we're going to make the beans, and then we're gonna finish off by making the pork chops. And while I'm making all of the side dishes, this is actually going to sit for about those 20, 30 minutes marinating. And I do want to note that if you see the pork chops change color, do not freak out. Honestly, it's the lime and the acid in the lime, just like tenderizing those awesome pork. All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side. Let's head on over to the stove and let's bring this Sunday dinner to life. <laughs> So, just kidding, we're not going over to the stove just yet. We actually have to make our white rice and we're gonna get into it. But first things first, you can definitely get some long grain white rice at ShopRite. In particular, you can use their bowl and basket line for white rice. Let me tell you guys something. I'm not even kidding. I keep this thing on deck at all times because we go through white rice here in my house so quickly, probably quicker than we should. Now, I'm going to be completely honest and completely transparent with you guys. Whenever I make rice these days, I actually use a rice cooker because it's super, super easy and super quick. So I am making roughly about two cups of rice. So I'm gonna add two cups of water because you guys know I like to do a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm going to add a healthy serving of kosher salt, which is roughly about half a tablespoon. I'm just going to give this a quick mix. Okay, that's good. And now I'm going to add my white rice, which by the way, I did go ahead and I pre-washed it. And anytime you're making rice, you definitely want to give it a good rinse because that's going to help your rice to come out nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna mix that all together until it's well combined. And now I'm also going to use some vegetable oil, which again, you can find it at ShopRite with their bowl and basket line. And again, I just love that you can get everything. It's a one-stop shop and it's amazing because it saves you time. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. It's gonna be roughly a tablespoon. Now this is the same exact way that I make my white rice on the stove. It's just these days I make it using a rice cooker because again it just saves me time and energy and it also takes up less real estate on my stove. Super easy. I'm now going to put the lid and make sure I get it. Ah! And I put the little button down and it's going to cook the rice. Now, this rice cooker is not a fancy schmancy one, but it definitely gets the job done. And now, for real this time, let's head on over to the stove and make the rest of our Sunday dinner. <laughs> Whenever I'm making Sunday dinner, I always like to start off by making the beans. And I'm going to be using the vegetable oil from Bowl and Basket. Now keep in mind that you can use whatever kind of oil that you want, whether that's olive oil or even some peanut oil. 
I'm now going to add some diced white onions along with some roughly chopped green bell peppers and I'm also going to add a pinch of salt just to help everything sweat and to activate all of those yummy flavors. Now I rough chopped the green bell peppers because I actually like to go in at the very end and just pick everything out and clean it up so that I have some beans that are really nice and smooth. So the onions will actually cook out all the way, but the peppers are a little bit more stubborn, so I rough chop them just to make it easier to pick out. I'm now going to add some fresh black pepper. And as I mentioned before, I am making some pinto beans and I bought the ones by Wholesome Pantry, which are also really tasty. Now it's totally up to you if you want to drain the water. I actually don't like to drain the water whenever I'm making canned beans because I find that that water has some extra flavor and I want to make sure that my beans are as tasty as can be. So after I've added the beans, I like to go in and I like to add water to that same can. And I like to swish it around just a little bit because there is some bean residue that gets stuck to the bottom of the can. And this is roughly about a cup and a half of water and you can totally eyeball it depending on how much beans you're making. So after I've added the water, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add some tomato paste. And just like the beans, I'm using the tomato paste by Wholesome Pantry. And I'm going to eyeball it and I'm going to roughly add about one tablespoon of tomato paste along with one teaspoon of Dominican oregano. But keep in mind that regular oregano will also work. I'm now going to mix everything until it's well combined. And now I'm going to add some fresh cilantro, which is also by Wholesome Pantry. Now, the cilantro is really going to add some nice freshness to our beans. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another pinch of kosher salt. And I highly recommend that you taste your beans as you go along. And feel free to alter the seasoning to your liking. So I'm going to let this come to a boil and I'm going to set it off to the side because it's really going to thicken and come alive for the next 20 to 30 minutes. I am now going to move on and I'm going to start making the pork chops and just like the beans I'm going to add some vegetable oil and once that temperature is nice and hot I'm now going to add my wholesome pantry pork chops which I seasoned earlier on in this video. Now we are making some chuleta guisada, so you don't have to worry about overcrowding the skillet because remember, we are going to be stewing this. And after a few minutes, we're now going to flip them over. And you want to develop some color at the bottom of the pan because this is going to add color and flavor to your dish. Now remember, I do not like to waste any of the marinade, so I added a tiny bit of water to the leftover marinade I'm now going to add it to the pork chops and this is actually going to help my pan deglaze which is going to help develop some more color and flavor that I mentioned earlier. Now our tomato paste is right nearby because we're going to be adding about one teaspoon and this is going to thicken up the sauce at the bottom of the pot and it's going to add so much more flavor to our pork chops. So after about five minutes, I'm now going to add those onions, peppers, and garlic that have been gently pickling that I created earlier on in this video. And you just want to very gently just spread them across. And then we're also going to add some more cilantro just in the middle for some more added freshness. I'm going to cover it and then I'm going to turn everything off because the steam will actually soften the onions and peppers. all right so i just finished cooking the pork chops and because i stewed them i actually don't have to worry too too much about drying them out because remember they are boneless and oh my goodness now we're not done just yet we have our rice which i don't want to put everything which was also cooking, so I'm just gonna fluff this up. All right, so I have the rice going. Now I also need to add the final touches to the beef. So 
I mentioned before that one of the things that I bought at ShopRite was the bowl and basket brown sugar. And that's because one of the final touches to the beans is actually some brown sugar. But you can definitely use some regular sugar if that's what you have on hand. And this is just going to balance everything out. I'm also going to add a touch of vinegar. And if you remember correctly, we didn't use all of our garlic in the beginning. So I'm now going to add the leftover garlic that I had and I'm gonna mix this until it's well combined. Now, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and huge, huge, huge thank you to ShopRite for sponsoring today's video as well. Don't forget to come back next week when I have an on you video. And if you need some inspiration on what to cook next, go ahead and click right here. Your girl's about to dig in because listen, it's dinner time and I am hungry. But my bad. Mmm, 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 mmm. Yes! <laughs>